Okay. So I'm going to welcome everyone and then uh is it Lydia? Can you go ahead then and take roll call? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Member Crawford. I'm here. And Gelster. Here. Thank you. Member Lewis. I, I'm Lowry. Here. And Chair Ebbett. Here. Well, just give me just one moment here. Okay. And you do have a quorum. Okay. Um, I apologize. I don't have my script in front of me. So, Lydia, do you have that? Yes, yes, ma'am, I do. Okay, thank um, you. Okay. This meeting is live stream and temporary close to in-person public participation. The clerk's office is in the process of hosting hybrid public meetings that will provide board members and members of the public with the option to participate in the meeting, either in person or remotely. Thank you for your patience and support. To make a verbal comment at today's meeting, dial 916-875-2501 to provide your contact information. When the chair opens public comment for a specific agenda item or off agenda matter, Callers will be contacted by phone and transferred into the meeting to make their public comment. Written comments are always accepted. Send your email comment to boardclerk at setcounty.net and your comment will be routed to the board and filed in the record. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, okay, just a reminder that the CPAC committee or commission is just a volunteer position uh, we do not get paid, and we're just here to help decide what this county or what our um, citizens in Orange Bell would like. So with that, I guess we can start with the miscellaneous matters. Okay, and this is Lydia with the Clerk of the Board's Office, and item number one is for community input on Sacramento County fiscal year 2022 through 23 budget priorities. Hey, good evening, uh, CPAC members. This is Chris Pahuli, Principal Planner with the Planning and Environmental Review Division. And um, as uh, Lydia mentioned, we don't have any planning items for you this evening, but uh, but we were directed to um, make presentation to all of the um, boards and commissions, including the 14 CPACs, and request um, some information from from CPAC uh, from the CPACs as it relates to the 2022-2023 annual budget for the county. And so in your agenda packet and what's on the screen right now is a document that was put together by the county that um, has an overview of the 2021 and 2022 budget uh, that was recently approved and um, went into effect. And the uh, county is on a fiscal year um, of July 1 to June 30th. So we're only a couple of months into our current budget cycle. And this document, uh, which I'm not gonna go over in, in much detail, hopefully you had a chance to take a, a look at it, but it provides an overview of the budget, um, the uh, roughly six and a half billion dollars and, and where that money comes from and how that money is spent across uh, the different uh, programs and departments and other efforts that the county is involved in. And um, what, the, what the board directed at the conclusion of this 2021-22 budget um, was that they already wanna start looking at next year's budget, the 2022-2023 budget. 
and they want to do a considerable amount of outreach uh, to get to uh, the community and stakeholders and um, other um, interested parties in developing their 2022-2023 budget. And so as a first step in that process, uh, they wanted to have staff go out to the various boards and commissions, again, including the 14 CPACs, and just have a conversation about priorities, budget priorities, and where um, the folks that sit on these uh, boards and commissions feel like the um, uh, county should be investing its budget resources. And so um, that's why we're here this evening, is to have a conversation and get input from you um, as to what you think uh, the county's budget priority should be, especially given the lens of, um, of Orangevale and what uh, investments need to be made in, in Orangevale. And so we've had these conversations with um, um, some of your colleagues on other CPACs and gotten good input. Uh, the clerk of the board's office um, will be recording the input provided uh, by you all and um, we'll be um, providing all of that input uh, to our CEO's office as they put together the outreach program for next year's budget, which really gets started at like the end of this year and early next year. So we, we are very early in the process and having these conversations. Um, but again, um, wanting to have a conversation this evening about Prior to, uh, priorities, and um, I should also note that the, the document that you were provided with has uh, links on the last page to all of the, um, uh, to, to a lot of different budget um, documents. You, you, you were able to kind of dig in deeper um, and, and uh, look at the budget and all of the associated documents if you, if you were interested, and you certainly can do that on a, um, you know, after this meeting concludes as well. So that's the um, introduction that I wanted to provide to you. Um, I'm happy to answer questions um, if, if you have any, and I can answer them to the best of my ability. Obviously, I'm not um, uh, involved in the preparation of the budget, um, but as a, a liaison uh, to, to you all, um, that's why I'm doing the budget uh, uh, overview. Uh, and presentation, but uh, happy to answer questions if I can. And um, really, we're here just to uh, hear from you all about what you believe the priorities should be, and uh, we will transmit those um, those recommendations uh, to uh, to the CEO's office and to the board. Okay, thank you, Paul or Chris. I'm going to get right over the coals for saying this, but I'm going to say it anyways. Um, the image you have up there on the last page offends me. That is not our population. So I'm just putting it out there, letting you know that that offends me, that image. Um, another thing that I'm looking through and I understand there are three lawsuits that Sacramento County will be paying out next year. Can you give us a rundown on those three lawsuits? And it was Supervisor Frost's office that told us about it. Yeah, I probably am not the right person to um, to be able to go over that. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I don't have information. I, I think I might know, but I don't want to speculate and provide um, incorrect information. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I'll, I'll go. This is Bob Crawford. Um, I, I just have a couple of questions. I, I did go through some of the other documents that are on the links in the back. Actually, I spent quite a bit of time um, doing this. Um, I, one of the things I, I did not find in in this year's budget is any increase to patrol activity by the sheriff. That's the number one thing. Um, I, I just can't couldn't find it. I know there were some increases in the 911 
process, but um, not in um, natural patrols. Uh, out in Orangevale, we're very limited in patrols. And um, given the homeless situation that is, you know, apparently growing, um, it is becoming more of a concern to a lot of my uh, neighbors and whatever. So uh, that's one question I have is, is there, did I just not read it right? Or is there no uh, funding for to do any of this? The other one is the transportation budget. Um, <clears throat> There was in, in the uh, in the documentation of the um, let's see what's it called it's uh, the revised budget letter by the executive um, administration I guess um, anyway there's a 12, twenty million dollar loan to the Department of Transportation a one year loan I guess to be paid back by the department uh, at some other time. Um, and I'm sure that this has been uh, identified to the board where this $20 million, how what is generated, but there's no supporting documents for any of that. So it's kind of like uh, we all have crappy roads and we all know that, but it would be kind of nice to know where this 20 million is going to go and, um, and you know, where can we see some of this? What I did find is some of the rehash of uh, old existing projects, uh, you know, Hazel Avenue, which has been going on since uh, before World War II, I think. Um, but anyway, um, it would it'd be kind of nice to know what's on the plate here. So, yeah, again, any input? It, it, sure. Uh, again, as I mentioned, um, the 2021 22 budget um, information is, is really provided just as a um, just as a resource for you um, to go back and do exactly what you did, kind of look look at and find information and see what is currently um, being invested, or what types of projects and what types of uh, efforts are, are the investments are going into. Um, and I, I get that some of it might be um, not entirely clear and I also am not going to be able to answer any detailed um, budgetary questions from other departments. Um, and, you know, what are they investing in? What are they not? What does this mean? What does that mean? But um, the, the, the reason of, of having this discussion is really to hear what the priorities are, or what you feel that they should be. So if it is an increase in support for the sheriff for patrols, if it is an increase in transportation funding to improve roads in Orangevale, um, that's the kind of feedback that we're looking to um, solicit as part of this discussion. And then we will, again, be providing that information over to the county executive's office and the board office as they start to kind of craft what um, what additional outreach they want to do for the budget and really what they're hearing from boards and commissions as being priorities. Well, I mean, those are the two items that are near and dear to many, uh, I won't say everybody on the council, but at, at least many of the my neighbors, um, you know, I live kind of out at, uh, right on the border of Sacramento County and Folsom and Granite Bay. And uh, to be truthful, I get better response from Folsom than I do from um, uh, anybody else. So it, it would be nice to have some priority on getting some more coverage to a sheriff. I actually haven't seen a, a sheriff patrol in probably 10 years out here. So um, every once in a while I'll see a CHP and I figure he's lost. But um, the, you know, the Folsom guys come out all the time Maybe that's a bad thing. <laughs> I don't know, but um, the, you know that's a concern from a lot of people. So um, that's I can lay those two things out there, um, and you know that's what we need to do. The the roads are you know as you know as everybody else knows they're they're in bad shape, and I just wanted to see what the priorities of the twenty million dollars was. 
and I couldn't find that. So, hmm. all right, I'm done. Hi, this is member Ebbett, Ebbett again. Um, looking under on page four under public safety and justice, it says for 2021-22 major initiatives, it says pre-trial programs for probation and public defender to support alternatives to incarceration. What if we don't like the alternatives? What if we, I mean, because this tells us something and then also says conflict criminal defenders. What is that? Again, to me, it goes back to what Bob was saying. You know, they're, wor they're more worried about this stuff than coming out and protecting us in this area. So, I know you don't have any say but it's just that if you want to know my feelings is I want more money to our safety and patrol and less going to the people who are trying to stay out of jail. I guess, I'm sorry, but the whole situation with this guy who was let out on no bail and killed, raped and killed a girl, I think this addresses that issue and we need to really think about this and say, uh, wait a minute. Okay, we're noting your, your comments. Member Ebbett, this is Alma Munoz from the clerk of the board's office. To, um, just to clarify, we will, um, would you like us to record um, your uh, your comments or your, your what you are asking um, be prioritized by the board as um, comments or as you would like more funds um, toward the safety and patrols? Or yes. do you want us to specifically say to go from the public safety program, from the programs to um, towards safety and patrols. Yes, I would like that because they have to get the money from somewhere. And so taking it away from the conflict criminal defenders or the support for alternatives to incarceration. No, the people need to go to jail. They do something wrong, put them in jail. And put the money towards safety, sheriff's patrol. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is uh, uh, Member Lowry. I do do want to make sure uh, that we're cap we're capturing uh, everything, and so um, the I, I want to make sure that we have recorded in the in the minutes of the meeting uh, the other member taking offense at the illustration on page eight of the budget document. So that, uh, so that we can refer back to that in the future. This is Lydia with the clerk of the board's office, and this meeting is being, the, the broadcast is being recorded. And okay. I have no problem with that. Yeah, I think I, I, I think it's helpful to have have anybody who cares to share their sense of, sense of these things to, you know, we owe them uh, the courtesy of getting them on the record. So, uh, are, Lydia, are you telling me that there'll be a, an MP3 file I can download, or will there be a, a transcript of, the, of this meeting? Or Yes, um, this, the meetings, uh, Lydia with the clerk of the board's office, and yes, the CPAC meetings um, and board meetings, planning commission meetings, you will be able to access it once the uh, action summary and once things are published, absolutely. Okay, thank you so much for that. You're welcome. Okay, if there's no other comments, um, do we have any staff updates? Uh, no, there are no staff updates.
today. Okay. Lydia Moving with the Paper Reports Office, I apologize, but um, there are no public comments for this item. Okay. For any of the items at, at this time, for the record. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, council member comments, do we have any? Okay, moving on to any public comments at all? And there are no public comments for any of the items um, on the agenda. Okay, then I say we adjourn the meeting. Okay, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, okay, everyone.